Welcome to Tim Rinpoche's Paranormal Zone. We're shooting another episode here in downtown Kuala Lumpur. This is where we live. This is the capital of Malaysia. And Malaysia is right next to Singapore and bordering with Indonesia and Thailand. And we have a very beautiful country here. The computers are not too bad. I mean, internet speed, um, good food, no diseases, no really any kind of natural land environmental disasters you know once in a while a tremor here and there once in a blue moon otherwise really nothing it's a safe beautiful modern advanced country and this is my home this is our home and i always call it beautiful malaysia anyway i live in the capital along with uh where kh is or kichara house we're all in the capital and we're here downtown and petronas towers is right behind me and i'm going to let you see how beautiful it is in full night light Petronas Twin Towers is the anchor project of Kuala Lumpur City or simply known as KLCC. We all call it just KLCC or Kuala Lumpur. And the idea came from Malaysian fourth prime minister, Dr. Mahathir Mohamed. Dr. Mahathir wanted the Twin Towers to be unique and to be iconic and to identify Malaysia, just like the Statue of Liberty in New York, the Great Wall of China, the Eiffel Tower in France. He wanted something iconic and it was his brainchild. Two buildings right next to each other and it's exactly the same height. It is the tallest in the world of its kind. In 1998 up to 2004, it held the tallest building in the world record. So during those years, Malaysia had the tallest building on this planet, 451.9 meters high or 1,483 feet. And there's two towers, 88 stories of office buildings. The Twin Towers or KLCC took seven years to build and it was officially opened by our Prime Minister at that time, Dr. Mahathir, on August 31st, 1999, which was National Day Malaysia. The Twin Towers also house a famous 864-seated acoustics extinction concert hall, the Petronas Philharmonic Theatre, which is also the home of the Malaysian Philharmonic Orchestra. That's right in this building right behind me. Next to the towers, right below, is the premier shopping mall, Sudia KLCC, and it has 1.5 million square feet. Six levels of shopping malls and over 200 shops, cinemas, food court, Petrona Science Center, and aquarium. And it's very similar to the aquarium in Sentosa in Singapore. So that's all that in the building right behind me, all right? Outside this is, there's a park uh, where there's a symphony lake where people can walk around and hang out and enjoy the uh, scene. It's, it's cool, it's calm, it's full of trees. There's a child safe playground, there's musical fountains, there's a public waterly pool and a jogging track. So this is KLCC Twin Towers and we're filming our episode this week on the little people of Belgrade right here in downtown Kuala Lumpur. And I thought I'd share this beautiful building with you and they turn off the lights to conserve energy and electricity every day at 12 Bindai. And let's see the skyline. Let's go towards the left and we can see the skyline. This is downtown Kuala Lumpur. It's pretty clean for a major city. It's pretty big. Now we're scanning back to the Twin Towers. And right on the right side of Twin Towers, you can see Am Bank. And Am Bank is really a wonderful bank and good people, good executives because they're one of our sponsors who help us with Kichara Soup Kitchen. And I want to thank M-Bank today for their kind patronage of our works in Kichara Soup Kitchen. Let's get back to the Twin Towers. Now you've had your little treat. We go back to our paranormal colors. As you know, as I was talking about KLCC, I gave you a little bit of a background. This is the capital here. Anyways, my mom, who grew up in Yugoslavia, had the third eye, as I said in another episode. And uh, she was real genuine about it. You know, I mean, there are people that say they have the third eye and some people who really do have the third eye and she had it, you know, she can see things, she can perceive things and she had really strong kind of premonitions. My mother told me that during World War I, her parents had moved from Kalmykia over to Eastern Europe. And from Eastern Europe, 
they kind of put their roots down and they stay there and they kind of learn the language, they learn the culture, they learn the people, they integrate it, but they kept their own culture, they kept their own religion, they kept who they were in their individual Eastern uh, European countries. My stepmother, who was Kalmyk, she actually lived and was born and raised in Belgrade, Yugoslavia. It was an idyllic kind of living, you know, fresh produce, you grow your own vegetables, you have great flowers, fresh air, you wash your laundry um, by hand, you dry it in the hot sun, you preserve and pickle uh, vegetables and fruits, you know, you make your own bread, um, you raise your own livestock, and everything really in um, Belgrade, Yugoslavia, when she was growing up, was really idyllic. During that time, World War II, Nazi Germany started uh, taking over and fighting different European countries. And, uh, but before that happened, nobody knew anything. Everybody was going to school, everybody was working their farms, everybody was living their lives, and everything was real natural and easy. And one day my mom said, she went outside of her house with her family, with her sisters and brothers, and you know, her sisters and brothers, we call this also, and the neighbors all came out. And it was really an incredible sight. It's like something out of Hollywood. But she told me there was caravans and caravans and caravans of little people. And this is my paranormal story for you tonight about these people that you usually don't see. We're not talking about dwarves. We're talking about little people, tiny. She said that they were really, really tiny. They reached up probably up to your um, hip. There were just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And they just stretched down the road and they had packed all their belongings. They packed up their picks, their hoes, their farming equipment. They packed up their clothes. They packed up even their livestock. And she said, you know what? They had teeny little horses, tiny little horses. They had wagons, covered wagons and all that. And um, everything was just like Yugoslavians except it was in miniature. It was like a movie set. She said that she couldn't believe her eyes. She just couldn't believe what she was seeing. But you know, it was not like as in little people, as in dwarf people that we see today. You know, you, you see one or two here and there. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these people. And they had talked to them. My mother and her neighbors and my mother's parents had talked to the little people. That's what she called them. And they were very friendly, they were very nice. Our family has asked them, what are you doing? Where are you all from? Who are you? And they said that we are people who live under the ground. And normally you can't see us. Normally you can't communicate with us. And it's very rare once in a while, people will see us in the forests. You know, we, we chance upon each other accidentally, but we usually keep our identities quiet and secret and you can't see us. And they said, we are leaving Yugoslavia. We are use, we're leaving this area. We're leaving for another area. Where, they didn't say, because there's gonna be a war coming. There's gonna be fighting. There's gonna be bloodshed. There's going to be famine. There's going to be noise. There's going to be a lot of upset and a lot of killing. And they're not gonna stay. They don't like this type of living. They don't like what's coming. So the little people said that we're leaving because an impending war is coming. And everybody kind of just was stupefied. Some laughed, some thought it was a joke. Some just couldn't believe their eyes and looking at all these little people, hundreds. And they said, you know, a war is coming. And everybody's like, what do you mean? What, what, what war? Everything's peaceful. We have food, everything's stable, everything's all right. But you say a war is coming. They said, that's right. We can't stay where there's gonna be a war because it's gonna be a lot of problems on the surface and we live below the surface. So that was it, you know. Um, my mom told me that she saw with her own eyes. It wasn't people who had dwarfism. It wasn't what we see modern dwarfs in movies. It was real little people. I mean, like people from Lilliput or something. And they had families. They had caravans, they had tools, they had clothes, they had miniature horses, miniature wagons, they had food, they had everything. They had their wives, they had their husbands, they had their kids, everything, and everything was packed up and they were leaving. And the incredible thing was, 
that nobody ever sees them. Nobody ever can have visions or encounter them in an ordinary situation. It's very rare that people can encounter them in a forest. I mean, what, what are they? Are they? Are they fairies? Are they gnomes? What are they? But my mom said she saw them, many other people saw them, and my aunt Gaga Elena also told us she was there and she had seen them too. She had remembered them too because she was older than my mother and they remember everything vividly. And you know, when my mother told me these stories along with her sister, my aunt, it was very normal. It wasn't like, wow, you know, um, these people are mystical, they're magical. It was accepted that these people were something of a mystical, magical background. They lived under the ground. They lived in the forests. They lived away from normal sized people and they didn't encounter people very often. These two races of people didn't encounter, that's us and them didn't encounter. But they were leaving now and they were leaving because a war was coming. And you know what? They left. Hundreds of them left, my mom says. And later on, a few months later, she said there was an announcement, the beginning of War War II and Nazi Germany was taking over Europe. And my mother and her family was in the middle of bombs, in the middle of fighting, soldiers, concentration camps. And finally, they had to leave Europe. They had to leave Yugoslavia. They had to leave Belgrade for the United States. And they all immigrated. And when they immigrated, they brought everything with them. Their culture, their religion, their background, and everything they had seen. So can you imagine, in Eastern Europe, in Yugoslavia during World War II, there were these mystical, mythical beings who we read about, who we heard about, gnomes, fairies, forest people, little people that actually live under the ground, that actually exist just as we do on a parallel type of existence, but under the ground. And my mom saw them. My mom's sister and family saw them and they told me this. So today I wanted to share this story with you about the little people right here, downtown Kuala Lumpur, with a beautiful skyline of the Petrona Twin Towers. It's nearly 12 o'clock, midnight, and you can see the Twin Towers, the lights are starting to go off in stages. I've never seen this before. This is the first time I'm standing right here below the Twin Towers of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, one of the tallest twin buildings in the world. Um, you can see the lights are going off step by step. And this, I guess, is our country's way of uh, conserving electricity and uh, saving the environment and saving some electric bills too. There it is, the whole building is off and we are standing here in semi-darkness. The Petronas Towers, KLCC is in total darkness now to give it a rest for the night. And we have finished our paranormal filming for today. I'm so glad you can visit downtown Kuala Lumpur with me, even if you're halfway around the world.